I don't speak oh here we go there's another see the water okay I need to speed it up but come on ah I thought this week how about an old rusty truck sitting in the field so anyway on and on and on all right there's another one and you know I can take this photo let's say I want it, the truck I want to use is yeah, I want it to face the other way. Well, I can take this and bring it up in Adobe Photo and reverse it. And you might know of other photo editing software. But, and I love the way in this one, I love the way the grass came up. You know, in fact, I found some of these rusted trucks and they were actual photos with trees growing out through them. So, I, I just found some wonderful, wonderful photos. And up. Oh, there's another secret. I'm going to put sheep out in my field. And they're real easy to draw. My daughter raises, my, my Katie, my second daughter, raises sheep. And in fact, she just had, yesterday, she had four lambs born. Two sets of twins, all rams. So, I think she'll be selling a lot of 4-H project lambs. But, um, but her, each of her sheep had twins, so that was nice. And, um... But anyway, but sheep are easy to do because they're like this big round blob, like a big round cloud with little skinny feet and a head. <laughs> so they're very easy. I know they would be pretty quick. But anyway, so okay, you get, you get the idea is I save plenty of, let me hit escape. And this way I can go back and look at each of the photos and decide what do I need to learn from that particular photo. So, all right, I'm going to, oh, let me see if I still have it up because, let me see, here it is. Remember I told you about Sunday, let's do the shamrock quilt? Well, look at this. Okay, here we go. Shamrock table runner. See it? And it has like, I think five shamrocks on it cute as it can be if you have a pen or a pencil just write down we also dot com we also dot com forward slash shamrock hyphen table hyphen runner and you'll be there and it tell you just what you need to sign up and uh, I wish I could show you the whole photo, but it is a cutie and looks very easy. And just machine applique, we can do that. We can do that. So, that will be Sunday. All right, so now I showed you that, how I can get some of what I need. That's how easy it is to research. So, okay. Thank goodness for the internet. You know, I mean, I used to save patterns. Like, oh my gosh, I've got to save this pattern. Now, you can go online and find almost everything you need. In fact, another thing I was going to show you real quick is I took and printed out a couple of the photos that I liked. This, the reason I like, and this way I can have them right in front of me while I'm working, but I never want to copy what someone else did. You don't want to violate any copyright laws if there were. But it helps me to say, what do I want to have in my landscape quilt? And in this one, what struck me, I don't want a barn, but what struck me was I really liked all of the different levels where the sun and the shadow and a little hill and a little valley. And I thought, oh man, I think I'd like more of that in my quilt. Okay. Then this had good photos of trees and leaves. And I particularly like that these trees weren't so dense. Now, it's going to be a lot of cutting. And if I, you could do, what do they call it, confetti? But I don't have any of the stuff to make it stick down. There's a powder you can use. And then you, it becomes like a fusible. This photo here. I liked because it showed the pond, the water feature in there. Also, another um, view of trees. So, I, I like this one. I thought this is a good one to use. And I like the way the fence in it. There's a fence there that I'll use to give me ideas for the... I want a fence in mine. And I like the way the grasses and stuff grow 
at the base of the pond. So I just set that there for inspiration. Now I don't have anything cut out today to actually work on, but I did pull a whole bunch. We'll get this out of the way. I love this. I go over to my landscape. Um, I have a like a uh, plastic bins and I take this bucket over there and I pull everything that I think I might want to use and this is to me I have found this is a great way to work because you never know until you actually start putting these in place and remember I told you I always change my mind oh and just to show you real quick too got all my scraps because that's another beauty of working with landscape quilts is you use lots of you can use lots of scrap so remember I told you I was bothered by this grass and I always change things well sure enough I slightly warmed up the tree and pulled it back up because it was fused down but I had this up here and now I'm thinking no I think I'm gonna pull it down so it's more foreground and I want to play around the next couple of days with adding some little swaths to show variation in the elevation of the, of, the, of the field. So, I brought some fabrics out and I'm going to show you those. Now, remember I was talking about the rusty truck. Something like this might be fun to have look like weeds. See how it gives you a little relief. Let me just show you what I've got and why. Then I've got the trees. Now, I don't need big pines here, but let's say I want to recreate a branch of a weed. I can pull out this part and use that. Then I don't know why that's in there, but and then I like this in case I want a little color. And this dot, I forget where I got this. I, I might have been from Flying Bulldogs. But talk about useful for landscaping. I mean, it, co it covers the gamut from yellows to grays to bright greens. And so it's really good for giving, you know, it has so many different colors in it for you to use. Then, okay, let me pull them out here a little. I don't need this. Get this out of the way. Okay, so I just grabbed. What? I don't know where these came from. Anyway, oh, I know what I was telling you. I'm going to tell you real quick. I didn't, I'm sorry to, to jump around on you. But here is a photo I had printed of the original of that landscape from the class. And you can see how I varied mine quite a bit, which I love that she encouraged us to do. But anyway, here's a photo of it. So let's say you think, well, I can't draw that well. Even if I get up all these pictures, I find them on Google. I'm not, I can't draw. Well, there's a, there is a really neat thing that um, you can do to help yourself. And I've done this many times. You take the, take a, photo. Now, of course, it'll probably be larger than this, but this is the first thing I could grab. You take then and you fold the photo. You print it out, of course. You fold it in half. Then you fold it in half again. Then you take this and you fold it the opposite way. And then one more time. And what this does, it gives you roughly 16 equal segments. So what I did is I drew the lines on here so you could see what I mean. But it divides it up. Then, let's say you're going to transfer this to some fabric, so you draw it on freezer paper. Well, take that freezer paper and fold it into 16 equal segments. Now it can be larger, it can be as big as you want. If the main thing is to have a segment where you see exactly what's in that photo. So like in this, just draw a line where the mountain goes. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but this, uh, you're only dealing with one little, where is it? One little section at a time. Okay? Now, 
that makes it so much easier. So on your freezer paper, let's say, you draw this, just what's in that one little section. So this helps break it down so that pretty much you could draw anything. And I, I think that would really work for you. So there's that to show you. Because like I guess say you had a picture of a, a sheep and so just fold it into sections and then draw. And then on your freezer paper, fold that into sections. And it can be bigger. It's a good way to enlarge, actually, and reduce without being able to use a copy machine. And just draw what's in that particular box. And it will, it will work. All right. So I've got all sorts of greens and things for tree leaves. And then I was thinking, ooh, I, I was thinking about doing the rusty truck, and I thought, well, maybe I'll do like a little tree line over right on the edge, and this might be some, you know, good bark, and then put leaves through, because, I mean, obviously, it looks like saplings, but they don't all grow like that with nothing else, but I can put some, you know, got I've got all my fusible pieces, so there I have this. And then there are pieces that I can maybe cut a swath and kind of have it go through the background. This would be really something pretty to cut a swath from. So, I got all of these out. And this, now this would be fun to do around the rusty truck. Because you can cut it, it looks like tall weeds that grow because nothing can eat them there or mow them down. So, and here was some more landscape fabric that if I cut this right, it'll look like tall grass. So, I got all of these out. All these things. This can look like texture in a tree, so I can cut out larger pieces to look like a bunch of leaves. So, got this out. This is for, I'm going to, let me see, what would I use for a swath? Okay, this is good swath. I don't want to use anything that has grass blades that are too big. You could even do a swath with something like this. And it'll look like, especially if you put it not too far from the tree, it can look like dappled shade. Or uh, that's... Mm, now this is a good one. So anyway, I've got some choices here. And I, after looking at that one, I think this would be really pretty. I think at some point, maybe under the tree to look like shade. So I think I'll be working with some swaths. And, oh, here's some more. So, anyway, now, then I know I want to do water, so I looked at pictures of water, and what I found is that water, if it's in the sunlight, it reflects the sky. If it's a sunny day, it reflects the sky. If not, it can be kind of a gray, like a flat gray. So I got all kinds, like this. Shady edges of water. This would be wonderful for. And as it comes closer to the sunlight, I could capture, you know, a little piece like this. This also is, a, it could be lovely for your shady edges of the water. So, you know, like, okay, let's say you lay this out for part of the water. Now, these are the lightest shades, so I'll set those aside. Um, there are all kinds. I mean, this could be a reflection of water. But here are the deeper tones. This is the same thing I've already laid here, so I'll put that aside. But I could take out, depending... Well, it's not really going to be wavy, so I don't think I would use this part. But, you know, maybe a little part of this, so I could use that. Um, let's say the edge of the lake can look a little murky where the grass grows. So you could use, look, I mean, if you just single it out, it kind of looks like, you know how you get the little algae in the plant life where the runoff at the edge of a little stream or pond? So that's pretty good. Oh, and here you go is a great medium value. So you've got two mediums, you've got these darks, I would, I would classify this as a medium, and a, even got a darker one if you wanted from that. So I could just cut little strips to go on the shadow side of the pond of this. Then I come in here with these. And the reason I chose these is I like the little, they're, they're d modeled look, you know, they're just not static. And 
this is probably what I would use to do my lightest, the part that is reflecting. And you can actually use a piece of sky fabric where the sun hits where it's reflecting the sky. So remember that too. So, okay, we got that. So anyway, so what I'm going to do is before, you know, before I make another video, I'm going to decide exactly which one of these and where do I put them. And for anything small, I'll use fusible. For anything larger, I'll use glue. Now, so then I was thinking, what else am I going to do in this quilt? Because, you know, I want to make it interesting. Well, instead of putting a barn, which I have done before, I've, I've got another one, I'm not done yet, but I said, what can I have in this quilt? I decided I want a fence. Well, I can make a white fence, creamy fence. Like I could use this side of the fabric if I wanted it mostly white. If I wanted a darker color, maybe an older, more rundown fence. Or I can use some of these wooden fabrics. This makes a good fence post. If you just have a little, show how you show a little bit. If you show a lot, it look you can see it's a bigger print than you want. But if you just show a little bit, it looks pretty good. Then this fabric, I could almost just cut it out along the lines and have it be a fence post or rail. Then this is also good. Let's say you want to make an old fence look. Something mossy, something starting to rot. You know, the fence is starting to sag. Here is a brighter version of that. So a fence at one time was painted white, but over the years it's kind of breaking down and rotting away. Same thing with this, and then back to the lighter fabric. So here are very good fence, fence possibilities. All right, then... Up, I've decided to put something up front that's going to have more texture and more definition like I did actually with my house quilt. So I don't know if I, I don't want a brick wall or stone wall like I had there, but I'm thinking if I have some, depending on where I put the fence, maybe the fence has a stone base. Or maybe I just cut some rocks out and kind of place under the grass and don't just stick them there or they'll look very odd but I could put a put a stone here and then slightly let's see cover it you know slightly cover it with see here's the stone I'm looking at slightly cover it with another little piece and you can cut these pieces as small as you want glue them down fuse them down and then when you go over it to thread paint it's all going to be stuck forever so it's good so anyway so what I did is I pulled out some of my stones this is really good if you want to make a wall or a post but I'm kind of leaning towards this I'm kind of what did, I, did you see that one but I'm kind of leaning towards this this bothers me because it's so white around it so it doesn't look realistic enough I think but this is just kind of subtle and it's there this would be a wonderful foundation for a barn wouldn't it I mean that's great so I'm going to do a fence and maybe some stones then I said I want to do a rusty old farm trucks somebody left it out in the field so I went and pulled everything that I would want for a rusty truck and I love these kinds of fabrics that run from one color to another to another because you know the brown truck in the shadow having this a little bit of this purple with it would be wonderful because you know shadows are really good when they're out of blues and violets that would be wonderful and then coming over if one part's in the sun look how it's a yellowy brown this really gives me lots of options. Then, this Stonehenge fabric. I mean, is that a rusty pockmarked truck or what? You could just picture dents and dings and everything. And then, the light areas are great for the sun reflecting on that. So, then I've got this that runs. This was another ombre. Love ombres. And it runs from a relatively 
pale to dark. So I've got so many wonderful... Look at this. This is a batik. And, you know, when you're talking about a rusty, bumpy truck, maybe the truck will have a little wooden flatbed on the back. And if I cut some of these pieces right, they're going to look like aged wood slats that would have been on the flatbed. And I've got some here that goes from brown to green. Well, fantastic, because I don't know if you've ever seen wood that's left out and not taken care of. Gets a greeny algae on it. So look, look at all these colors. And, you know... I don't, I don't know if this is going to work, but I brought it just in case. But I will probably use a little bit of most of these to make my truck because that gives it depth. And you are actually painting with fabric. So these are going to be my rusty truck. Then I said, oh, I'm going to put sheep in there. Okay, so I'm going to use Suffolk sheep because that's what my daughter, my grandson, uh, Devin, is raising now Suffolk sheep and my daughter raises Suffolk crosses South South Downs and um, so what I did is I thought well let's do Suffolk sheep Suffolk sheep are the ones that have black feet black heads so that's what we're going to do so I said muslin that's a good sheep sheep standing out in the sun there you go okay then sheep that Standing out in the sun, but dappled shade. There you go. Sheep standing out in the shade. So use your range of colors. Go from light to medium to dark. And you think, well, that's a floral. How is that a sheep? Believe me, when you cut out that little round woolly body, that's going to look like a very woolly sheep. Then all I need is little a little scrap to do the little skinny feet and the little head. So the next time we get together, which might be Sunday, I, I can't promise you I can do something ahead, but I will try if I can. I will have my decisions made. I will have things cut out. Uh, for the small things, I'll have fusible on the back. There you go. I'll have fusible on the back of the small things like the sheep head, and the little feet and the body. If you want to do something fun, you can put a little bit of batting behind your sheet. Or we can wait until we do thread painting and stuff and then do that or the quilting. Um, but I will have my water decisions made and have those on freezer paper most likely. And I'll have probably some things glued on. And then I'll decide if I'm going to have some, some of those beautiful... Let me grab this. Okay. I really like how this person this I, I do believe this is a quilt it might be a painting but I love the swaths of different color it looks like fabric to me so I'll have those decisions made and I'll have those with freezer paper so I can glue those on and I'll have my rusty truck and the weeds all growing around it and um, and this will give you a chance to say, hmm, what do you want? And, and go and type in on Google, type in images of large farm field or images of a farm or whatever. Just, just type in and be looking. And then just right click, save image as, and then save it in your pictures folders. Now, if you have Mac, sorry, you're on your own, but I wish I could tell you, but I don't know. I've never had a Mac, so anyway. All right. Well, I think that's about it for today. Um, oh, just know, there's a point in which landscape quilts, I think, look ugly, and it's it's if you're making, let's like you're making a dress, and there comes a stage where you think, does this really go on a, a human body? But if you stick with this, this quilt will go through an ugly stage. And then when you start doing, using paints and ink tense pencils or fabric markers, thread painting, it'll all of a sudden, it'll make sense. So don't let it, don't let it worry you. At first it looks really good and then it starts to go through an ugly stage and then you'll pull it all back together because until you have the shadowing and stuff, it's going to look a little cartoony. Don't let it worry you. And 
like I always say, your quilt, you can do whatever you want. It's your world, your decisions. So, uh, I think that's really about it for today. Let me hurry up and go get this loaded. I hope it doesn't take another eight hours like the last one did, because I want you to see it and know that I really am going to put a video when I promise. So, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Sunday if I can. If not, just watch for the tape. And until next time, until it's our time to quilt, have a great week. Bye-bye.